To some start in this video, we're looking at differential equations. So in order to work out a differential equation, you must separate the variables. So this means expressing the left-hand side solely in terms of y, and then the right-hand side purely in terms of x. So for this one, we have to find a general solution to the following differential equation. So that means that we're going to have a y equals something. So in order to start this off, in our first step, what we're going to do is split it up into x and y. So we have all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other. So that means that what we're going to have is we're going to times everything by dx to start off. So therefore, what we're going to get is dy is equal to dx times by 5xy. Now, in order to get the y on the other side, then we're going to divide it by y. Now, we can presume that this is 1 times dy. So, therefore, what we're going to get is 1 over y dy is equal to 5x dx. So, now we've got that. What we have to do is integrate both sides. So we're going to be integrating 1 over y d, dy, and that's going to, we're also going to be integrating 5x dx. So therefore, we're going to get ln y. If you remember our standard integral videos, we know that 1 over y is going to go to, to ln y, and that is going to be equal to 5 over 2 x squared, and this one will be plus c. We only need this 1 plus c because it's a constant, but we'll put the plus c on this right-hand side. So therefore, we can now work out y by using logarithmic rules. Uh, and we know that ln y, if we want to get rid of that ln, we're going to have to do e to the 5 over 2 x squared plus c. So this is a technically our final answer, but we can simplify that. And using these rules of indices, we can say that y is equal to e to 5 over 2x squared, and that is times by e to the c, and that's because the powers are added there. We can also express e to the c as just a. So therefore, our final answer can be a and then e 5 over 2 x squared. So our next question is slightly more difficult. It is that dy by dx is equal to y squared plus 1 to the power 5 over y. So to start this off, we're going to again try and separate the variables. So we're going to get dy, and then we're going to times everything by dx, which is going to give us dy is equal to y squared plus 1 to the 5 over y times by dx. Then in order to get everything, the y's on the other side, we're going to have to divide everything by y squared plus 1 to the power of 5 over y. And if we were saying that this is going to be 1 over that, because dividing it, we're going to get 1 over that, all we're going to have to do is flip it around. So therefore, what we get is y over y squared plus 1 to the 5. That's dy is equal to dx. So now let's integrate both of these. And as you can see, the left-hand side is a lot more difficult to integrate. So therefore, we're going to integrate this by substitution. Now, if you haven't watched my video on integration by substitution, it would be good to watch it if you don't understand how to do it. But I will go through it briefly now. So therefore, for this one, we're going to let u equal y squared plus 1. That means that du over dy is going to be equal to 2y. So therefore, 
dy is going to be equal to du over 2y. So we can replace that now, and now we're integrating something different. We're now integrating y over u to the 5, and that instead of dy is going to be du over 2y. But we still have y's in here, so that means that we can cancel that, and we can also cancel that. So that shall be now equal to a half, as we're taking that there outside, then it's going to be integrate 1 over u to the 5 in terms of du. So that is therefore equal to a half times by, and then 1 over u to the 5 is the same as u to the, to the minus 5. So that is going to integrate to give minus a quarter u to the minus 4. So therefore what we've got to integrate to is minus an eighth and then u to the minus 4. So therefore we can put in back that u to get minus an eighth. u is equal there to y squared plus 1. And that is to minus 4. So this can then be written as minus, and then it's going to be 1 over, and then we're going to have 8, and then y squared plus 1 to the 4. And it's going to be to the 4, it doesn't need to be to the minus 4, because the minus 4 just implies that it's 1 over. So therefore, that isn't our final answer because we still need to think about the right-hand side. So we have minus 1 over 8y squared plus 1 to the 4. And then that is going to be equal to the integral of dx. So that's simply going to be x because you can just apply it as a 1. And then that's going to be plus C. And that, therefore, is our final answer. So our final question has it in a little bit more context. It says that the rate of change of the temperature of a kettle of water, which is measured by y, after it boils is directly proportional to the difference between the temperature of the water and the room temperature. And the room temperature is 20 degrees. So we have to write down a differential equation for this relationship. So the rate of change is obviously modelled by the gradient, and the gradient is used by differentiation. So normally we have dy by dx. This time we've got the rate in change of the temperature of a kettle of water, which is going to be y. So that's going to be dy. And then that is going to be over, because it's the rate of change, and it's going to be how long, it's going to be over dt. Now that is therefore equal to the diff, the, is directly proportional, which is going to mean there's going to be a k. So that k is a constant of proportionality. And that's what we have when it's directly proportional to the difference between the temperature of the water and the room temperature. So therefore the temperature of the water is going to be y and it's a difference, so it's going to be y minus 20, as the room temperature is 20. And therefore, so that therefore is our differential equation for this relationship. In B, it's asking us to show that y is equal to 20 plus a e k t, where a and k are constants. So therefore, what we're going to have to do is get one side in terms of uh, y's and then one times in terms of, in this case, it's going to be t's. So that means that we're going to be able to say that dy is equal to k then y minus 20. And that's going to be times by dt. So therefore, we're going to divide everything by y minus 20 which is going to give us 1 over y minus 20 
that's going to be dy is equal to k dt. So therefore, let's integrate both sides now. Integrate that side, integrate that side. That is going to give us ln and then the modulus of y minus 20. And that is going to be equal to kt. Remember, k is just a constant. Say, for example, if that was 5, then it would be just 5t. And then plus c. So therefore, in order to get it in terms of y, as we're looking to try and get it into this form here, then we're going to have to do y is going to be equal, or y minus 20, in fact, because we have that for now, is going to be equal to e, and then it's going to be kt. And then we're using that rule of indices to times by e to the c. So therefore y is going to be equal to 20. And if you remember this e to the c is going to go to a, so it's going to be 20 plus a e and then k to the t. And now we can see that is exactly the same as what it wants. So now we're kind of going away from differential equations for this next question. And it's asking us, given the initial temperature is 100 degrees, write down the value of a. So in order to do that one, we've got 100, and then it's going to be initial temperature, so it's 0. So y is going to be 100. That's going to be equal to 20 plus a. And it's just going to be a because it's t is equal to 0, which means that's going to be uh, to the 0, which is going to be 1. So therefore, a is equal to 80. So the final question we have then is after eight minutes, the temperature is 60 degrees, show that k is equal to minus an eighth ln two. So therefore, y is gonna be equal to 60. That is therefore gonna be 20 plus 80e. And then because it's after eight minutes, it's gonna to be to the eight k. Therefore, that's going to be equal to 40 is equal to 80e to the 8k. So that means that a half is equal to e to the 8k. So in order to get this, we're going to have to take lunds of both sides. So that means that we're going to get 8k is equal to lund to the half. Now that looks very similar to the um, question that we have. Um, but we're going to be able to do k now and divide it by an eighth, which is equal to an eighth lund to the half. We have the answer now, we have what k is, but k is saying that it wants us to find that it's minus an eighth ln two. So to do this, we're gonna need a little trick, and this little trick is we're gonna do this to the minus one, because one half to the minus one is equal to two. So if we do that, then we also have that an eighth is gonna be minus now. So by just doing that little trick, we're going to get k is equal to minus a half, minus an eighth, ln two. So that's a little trick you can do. You don't need to do it unless it says in the answer that it wants it in that form. And when it says it wants it in that form, that's when you should do it. So that's an example where differential equations does come in useful. And then you have a further questions at the end, which include exponential and logarithms uh, are questions. But that is where differential equations can come in into a whole question. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.